Michal kotler Wunsch, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I, I want to start, I guess, by asking you about the, the rise that we are certainly seeing in anti-Semitic anti incidents, certainly in this country, in the U.S., in Europe, and all of this since October 7th. How concerned are you by what you're seeing, and, and are you surprised by it? So I'll start with how concerned I am, and I believe that this should be of grave concern to everybody, because actually the atrocities, the war crimes, the murder, the burning, the rape, the abduction of October 7th, much like 9-11, changed the world as we know it, and really is a, an affront or a waging of war on our shared humanity, on civilization as we know it, by genocidal terror, Hamas, a genocidal terror proxy of a genocidal terror regime, Iran, and let it be clear, the Hamas charter, like Mein Kampf, calls for the annihilation of the Jewish nation state, Israel, and for the murder of Jews. And that anti-Semitism is what fueled the atrocities and the war crimes of October 7th. And that very same anti-Semitism is unfathomably what fuels the responses that deny, that excuse, that justify October 7th. And in an Orwellian inversion, then see the rise and a dramatic increase in anti-Semitic incidents that attack individual Jews around the world, mm -hmm. in Berlin, in Melbourne, in New York, in Canada, and around the world. Obviously, there are a lot of people, particularly right now, who might take issue with some of the Israeli government's response to, to what is happening and to the way they are dealing with Gaza. H how, do, how do you differentiate criticism uh, of, of what is happening versus delegitimization de of the state of Israel and anti-Semitism, because those are different, different things. So first of all, thank you very much, Rosemary, Rosemary, because that's a critical differentiation. Look, the single and only definition that now is able to identify and combat what we have clearly seen with the masks off post October 7th is the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition that includes the demonization, the delegitimization, and the double standards against the Jewish nation state, the single and only Jewish country around the world, and actually clearly stipulates the difference you just pointed to between mm -hmm. criticism of the state of Israel, like criticism of any other country, and it's very delegitimization. It's very undermining or questioning of its right to exist. Are you concerned, though, back, back to the question about the actions of the Israeli government, that those actions are leading to anti-Semitism because people aren't able to make a differentiation between uh, Jewish people and the actions of, that, of the Netanyahu government? Oh, it is not a Netanyahu government, Rosemary. Let it be very clear. This is a unity government that represents all of the people of Israel that not only can but must protect our children. When I landed in Israel today, there are still rockets being launched. There is a war raging. Over 7,500 rockets, each a double war crime, shot at Israeli civilians from densely populated areas in Gaza. Not only allow the Israeli government, like any other government, to protect its civilians, us, our children, that were murdered and beheaded and butchered, butchered and burned. They must defend our civilians as any country would. Mm -hmm. And anybody that alleges that Israel's actions in an Orwellian inversion is to blame for what either happened on October 7th or will happen in the coming weeks, because this is just the beginning, there are no two sides between genocidal terror that has waged war on our civilization sure. and a democratic country that must defend itself from it. But, but not everyone supports every action that the government is taking. I, I guess that's my point. I, in Israel. <laughs> I don't mean outside of Israel. Well, there's Not a everyone unity is government. Israel. Yeah. Uh, Rosemary, there's a unity of government exactly for that reason. Yeah. There's a war cabinet. There's a unity government. And there is a war raging. Not only does everybody not uh, does everybody uh, support, I'm not talking about individuals who may not think that Israel has a right to exist. It doesn't matter if they're Jews or non-Jews. If you believe that the state of Israel has no right to exist, by the way, if you tell Israel it has no right to defend itself, then by what you are saying is it has yes, no right yes, to exist. Yes. If you believe that Israel has no right to exist, well, then, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, of course. But Israel must defend itself. There is unanimity in that it must defend itself. Right. And I'll make very clear, our soldiers would not be threatened if Israel did not 
respect the imperative to protect human life, did not attempt to create the human corridors, did not continue to enable humanitarian aid to flow into Gaza way beyond the call of duty. So let it be clear again that the only one to be criticized and anybody who cannot condemn that genocidal terror organization, that, that barbaric, savage war crime act of October 7th, really has to re-examine what it is that they are supporting. If it is genocidal terror, then let it be known that it's genocidal terror's yeah. ability to attack all democracies. Let, let me ask you about, uh, because you are so deeply connected to this country as well, and, and the way many Jews in this country are, are feeling, which is scared, uh, increased police presence around synagogues, schools, community centers, neighborhoods. What is your message to, to people in this country, so far away from the actual conflict, but feeling um, the tension and the fear? I am not just Israel's special envoy for combating anti-Semitism. I'm the Jewish people's special envoy for combating anti-Semitism. And I call out to all those that feel not only the threat, but the fear, and to those that are friends of those that may not be Jews, that, that mm -hmm, know that mm -hmm, they have mm -hmm. friends that are threatened, to speak out with moral clarity and with courage, because nothing is worse than the false moral equivalence that we have just discussed between a genocidal terror organization openly calling in its charter for anni annihilation of the state of Israel and the murder of Jews around the world and the democratic state which must, must defend its civilians. The war, the unconventional war on public opinion that has weaponized international law and human rights, that has become a war of words on campuses, online and on the streets is one that demands not only clarity but courage. Right. And to my friends all over, I say that never again that we all committed to a prospective commitment, never again is right now. Michal Kotler-Wunsch, thank you for your time. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for having me, Rosemary.